It is a cloudy early afternoon in downtown Cincinnati, and another sellout crowd is on hand at Great American Ball Club. It's game two of this three-game weekend series, and a happy 4th of July, everybody. The St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Cincinnati Reds in our very special telecast today, presented by our friends from Marathon Oil. And hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh. I'm Tom Brenneman. Happy 4th of July, Mr. Welsh. And obviously a very tough night for the Red Legs last night. They bounced back more times than not all season long. They've got to do it again here today. Well, they bounced back last night, Tom, after they got down. They did come back and made that ball game a lot tighter. But you know what? It's one of those things where in baseball you play 162 games. You've got to learn how to turn the page. They're professionals. I know some of them are still feeling the effects deep in here from what happened last night. But you know what? you got to go back out and get him this afternoon. Let's take a look at our G pitching matchup today. Brad Thompson against Micah Owing. Well, both these guys are somewhat a little bit short in the scouts vernacular uh, as far as their, their stuff goes, but they both learn how to pitch a little bit. Brad Thompson is sinker, sinker, sinker. Uh, he's two and four. He's had good success against the Reds, however, in the past. Micah Owings coming off a very good outing against the Indians. Hope he can duplicate that today. Well, as we celebrate the birthday of the United States of America, it's our pleasure today to present our national anthem and here to perform it, Naval Officer Reuben Miner. And now, please join Naval Officer Ensign Reuben Miner in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rest we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rock is red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled band Officer Reuben Miner. More to come from Great American Ballpark on this 4th of July.
descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Our special telecast on this 4th of July presented by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Now the Reds and Cardinals are about five minutes away from game time, but before we have the first pitch, you know, growing up, the Pledge of Allegiance started each and every school day for so many of us. In most cases, it still does. At least it does here in the heartland of America. So it's only appropriate that we begin our day today by saying our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Cincinnati, partly covered by low clouds. We have a late rain falling already here, Chris, but it appears as though they're going to go ahead and try to get this game started on time. Well, evidently, Tom, the long-term prognosis for the weather here is not all that good. There is a large front that is, goes all the way back to western Missouri, uh, well, well west of St. Louis that is uh, on its way and be the beginning of it has already reached here, but it's very little drizzle right now. The way it's raining here should not affect at all the play of the game. Maybe a little discomfort for the fans, but overall we're still celebrating 4th of July with good old fashioned American baseball right here at Great American Ballpark. A tie on you today looks very handsome with the red, white, and blue. I know you came prepared and have been waiting to break that out. You look real nice. Well, you know, I broke it out. Uh Try to remember my other TV partner, George Graham, because I came to the ballpark somehow forgetting to bring a tie. I thought we would perhaps wear uh, sports shirts, red shirts, you know, the red, white, and blue shirts. The Reds have a few of those. They look pretty nice. But today we wanted to dress up a little bit more, so I reached into George Graham's little suit and valet bag that he left behind when he went home for the weekend, and uh, I pulled out this nice blue, uh, blue and red and white uh, tie. So, George, thank you very much, partner. <laughs> You pick me up one more time. What do you think? And I think got, you look very nice. And you've got the June uh, Father's Day giveaway tie they had here, and that looks pretty sharp on you. And it's your tie. So thank you, partner, well, for picking welcome. me up. Well, it's all about teamwork here. Well, that's highly debatable. Well, the Reds take the field on this 4th of July. We take a look at Tony LaRusso's lineup for the Cardinals. Skip Schumacher leads off at second base. Colby Rasmus in center field. Albert Pools, boy, did he do damage here last night. He'll bat third. Chris Duncan, the left fielder, he'll bat cleanup. Rick Ann Keel in right. Yadier Molina behind the plate. A latter third of Joe Thurston. Brad Thompson, the pitcher, batting eighth. Tyler Green, the shortstop, will bat ninth. And on the mound for the Reds, a five and eight right hander, an ERA just over four and a half. His right hander, Michael Owings. Well, he pitched very well his last game out. Did Michael Owings, a, a guy that uh, did got beat around a little bit against the Toronto Blue Jays, where he gave up six runs. But in his last start, it was against the Cleveland Indians. The Reds won that ball game eight to one. He went six innings of five hit, one run baseball. And he's been throwing a lot better recently. Uh, forget the, the outing there in Toronto. The Blue Jays were on a couple of pitchers up there, Owings and both. 
Bronson Arroyo had their problems, but you go back to June the 17th, six innings of two-run ball. Last Sunday, six innings of one-run ball, and that's really what you hope to get out of Michael Owings. He's a five, six-inning pitcher. If he can get you in the eighth inning, that's icing. But right now, he's anxious to try to stop his losing streak at one. It's amazing the Reds and Cardinals have played eight times this season, splitting the eight games, and Michael Owings has not started until today this year against St. Louis. You know, the only problem with pitching today, Tom, the way I see it, is that I talked about it with you off there. It's the Danny Heron syndrome, which is after you had Mike uh, Homer Bailey throwing the ball last night, 95 to 98 miles an hour. I mean, that ball looked like an aspirin tablet to most of the Cardinals all night long. You're the next guy, another right-handed pitcher, but he's a lot less speedy than Homer Bailey. His stuff isn't as good, and you wonder if maybe that ball is going to look a little bit bigger. So Schumacher digging in, looks at a first pitch strike, and this game is underway. Gary Cedarstrom calls the balls and strikes today. Jim Wolf at first, Brian Onore at second, Field and Culbreth works at third. And the umpires donning the red caps on this 4th of July. It's on the ground of Brandon Phillips, and after two pitches, one out. St. Louis getting the ball into this Reds defense presented by Ford. Chris Dickerson, Willie Tavares, Jay Bruce, left center and right. First start for Edwin Encarnacion. He appeared in the game last night, fresh off the DL. Jerry Hairston Jr. over at short. Phillips and Votto on the right side. And a battery of Mike Owings and Ramon Hernandez. So outside of the shortstop position, you have as close to the Reds' opening day lineup, theoretically, as they have had really going back to the second week of April. Colby Rasmus, the rookie center fielder, launches one to deep right center field, and St. Louis has a one to nothing lead. Home run number nine for Rasmus. We mentioned outside of batting average, he leads in every major offensive category, all National League rookies. And he's added to a number of them on that mighty swing of the bat. Well, he's got a quick bat. We've talked about how good he is at hitting a fastball. Well, that's a breaking ball right there. And quite frankly, Michael Owings' breaking ball simply is not good enough to throw to most left-handed hitters. He kind of rolls it up there. He rarely stays on top of it, adds a lot of depth. His better pitch to a left-hander is a changeup. I know what he tried to do right there, which is get down and in to, uh, to Rasmus, but uh, simply didn't get to his spot. So now Albert Pools clubbed his 31st home run of this season last night. His team down 3 nothing, came to the plate with the bases loaded against David Weathers and hit a 2-2 pitch over the left center field wall. Had another RBI, a double in the ninth inning, giving him 82 runs batted in this season. This one in the air to Joey Votto and there are two goals. Yeah, I talked to David Weathers today at length about that at bat that he had with Albert Pujols, and you know his game plan was to simply stay away from him. And that last pitch he threw him just floated right back over the plate. He knew when it came out of his hand it was going to be a mistake pitch, and just sometimes it rolls like that. But uh, boy, that's a dangerous guy. Let's hope that the situation doesn't repeat itself today. Chris Duncan looks at a strike. One and one to Duncan, a 240 batter, only five home runs and 32 runs batted in. Duncan, a very quiet night here last night, 0 for 2, drew a walk. They hit for him in the eighth inning. Bout off to the third base side, one ball and two strikes. Well, you're not lying when you talk about Owings. Outside of that one start against Toronto, we showed you the numbers where he allowed the nine hits and six earned runs and five and two thirds innings. The three outings prior to that, six innings, two runs against the Cubs. Five and a third innings, four hits, and one run against Washington. And then the six innings and two runs against Atlanta. Then came Toronto, but bounced out back by giving up the one run in the first inning last week against Cleveland. And that would be the only run he allowed the game. Duncan gone on strikes and that'll retire the side. 
So a home run by Rasmus makes it one nothing. We all have fond memories of the 4th of July while growing up. Here are some of the Reds players reflect on their favorite memories. This American moment brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Usually have like a big bonfire or something like that with a bunch of fireworks and stay up probably later than you should, but hey, it's July 4th, you can do that. I have to say back home in Grass Valley where I grew up, I think we go to the fairgrounds and I just loved the fair when I was younger. All the games and all that, and then the, the fireworks are always fun. We laid, laid out blankets, like thousands of people laid out on the lawn and stuff, so it was always fun. Just growing up uh, in Odessa, going to the parades downtown, uh, a lot of fireworks, a lot of, a lot of fun. I just remember being uh, with my family a lot, uh, just enjoying the holiday. It was really cool because when I was uh, seven years old in 1976, that was the, the bicentennial year and the 200-year celebration. and. Uh, it, you know, it was really cool because even now, at, at 39, 32 years ago, I can still remember uh, how crazy the country was over being 200 years old. So, uh, Fourth of July has always been a, one of my favorite holidays. Leading off in left field, Willie Tavares in center, Joey Votto at first. Brandon Phillips in second, batting cleanup, Jay Bruce in right, Edwin Encarnacion back in the lineup at third base. Very good numbers in his career against Brad Thompson. The latter third of Jerry Harrison Jr., Ramon Hernandez, and Michael Owens. And on the mound for St. Louis, pitched in nine games out of the bullpen. His last six outings have been starts. Brad Thompson. He's actually been a little bit better out of a starting rotation time than he has out of the bullpen. He's faced the Reds a lot. He's faced them overall 20 times in his career. He's got an earned he's got an earned run average of 3.6 against the Reds and an unblemished 3 and 0 record. There are his last three starts right there against the Giants. He picked up a loss in that ball game. They got beat 10 to nothing in that game. That, yeah, that was last Monday. That was against the reigning Cy Young Award winner Tim Lincecum of the Giants. Ball one to Chris Dickerson. He led off the game here last night with a double. And scored in the opening inning. That would be his only hit in five at bats. We have a lot of good stuff coming your way here today. We'll be joined by a young man all the way over in Iraq serving our country. Benjamin Fiella. He goes by the name of Ben. He went to Grove City High School up in the Columbus area. And in 2003 was appointed to West Point and graduated from there in 2007. We're looking forward to having him with us. Grew up a big Reds fan. Came to a lot of Reds games. Two on Dickerson. And you notice the logos, the stickers on the helmets being worn by both teams. Some of you may be curious in an effort to raise awareness and financial support for organizations leading the fight against ALS, otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Every Major League Baseball club playing at home on the 4th of July, and you can see even the road team. If you'd like more information, Log on to MLB.com slash four, the number four, ALS. Three and two to Dickerson. And a roller down the pools. That's an easy out. One away. Let's take a look at St. Louis defensively presented by Ford. They'll go with Duncan and left. Rasmus in center field today and Keel over the right. Thurston and Tyler Green on the left side. Schumacher and Pools on the right. Thompson and Yadier Molina, the St. Louis batter. Willie Tavares had a good night last night. He had two hits and four at-bats, was on base three times. 
In the bottom of the ninth inning, Willie Tavares walked for the first time since May the 23rd. Spanning 23 games and 97 plate appearances. Oh, and two. There's a bouncing ball in the center field, a base hit by Tavares. So here in one game and one more at bat, Tavares has three hits, is on base for the fourth time. Well, they tried to go with back-to-back -back breaking balls right there, and that one caught a lot of the plate. I was uh, kind of curious why the shortstop wasn't playing a little bit more towards second base prior to the pitch. Oftentimes, of course, the shortstop, second baseman are peering in at the catcher, trying to pick up the sign. Anytime you get a breaking ball going away from a right-handed hitter, usually that guy pinches himself a little closer to second base. Connor Green did not do that, and the ball went right in the spot where he probably should have been. One on, one out, bottom of the first inning. Reds down one nothing. Now Joey Votto and the runner going in a throw down to second. No chance to get Willie Tavares. So he gets his 16th steal and just like that stands in scoring position. You know, Tom, in my recollection, that is one of the first times this season that Willie Tavares has decided to go on the first pitch that he sees out there from first base. So often we've seen him work the count like a hitter works the count, trying to find the exact perfect count to go on. Hey, before Thompson got a chance to settle in, he was off. That one hammered down the line, but foul. I'd like to remind you tonight's mega million dollar jackpot just continues to rise, much like the deficit, up to $133 million. Mercy. Votto with the runners in scoring position, a 404 batter, even more impressive than his overall season average at 363. But he's behind 0 and 2. Rui had a pitch to club right there and fouled it straight back. Now they get ahead of him and then you try to take his power away by going right inside on the inside corner. That ball actually tailed back out over the plate a little bit and Votto just a hair underneath it. a fair ball into the corner. Tavares will score to tie the game. Votto on his way to second. He's coming to third. Here comes a throw for it gets away from the shortstop and Votto is in there with a three base hit. And Keel had problems down there in the corner and then he missed his cutoff man. The second baseman Skip Schumacher. Well the similarities between these two teams are many. And I don't know if there's any more common denominator between them is that both first basemen are the best players on the team. And Joey Votto does for the Reds what Albert Pujols does for the St. Louis Cardinals, which is ignite the offense. Driving in a run right there with a triple down the right field line. First three base hit of the year for Joey Votto. And now the Reds in business. With a runner at third and only one out and Yadier Molina couldn't walk any slower out to the mound to check in with Brad Thompson. You know, I, you know, Yadi Molina does more than just catch for this Cardinal team. He runs the team in the absence of Tony La Russa or Dave Duncan actually being on the field. And that was not just a pep talk to try to settle the pitcher down. That was a behind the woodpile behind whooping. Saying, you better get your act together right here. You've made two mistakes in a row. One to Tavares and one to Votto. And maybe another. That is a foul ball. Not by much. Mercy. Yeah. And we didn't read his lips or anything, Tom, but you can just tell the, the body language of him going out there, picking up the rosin bag, not even looking at his pitcher, slamming it down behind the mound, just trying to motivate his pitcher to turn it up a notch or two. We are playing in a very, very light rain. We're in the bottom of the first inning, and already each team has scored a run. Votto stands at third with one out. And a breaking ball the way to Phillips. One ball, one strike. Brandon, a couple of hits in a game here last night. A single, a double, an RBI. We well, had a hang 
runner right there and couldn't pull the trigger. Fouls it off. One ball and two strikes. Told you the Reds average is a team in like situations, just barely over 51%. So Phillips has been far better than the rest of his teammates. Now the infield on the right side comes charging in, and that fastball, Phillips said it hit him. But Fielding Culber says no deal. But I beg your pardon, today that is Gary Cedarstrom. Circle. A single by Tavares, a stolen base, and then a triple by Joey Botto has tied things at one here in the bottom of the first inning. And now Phillips tries to give the Reds the lead. Ball four away. Forty runs batted in. He comes to the plate with runners on the corners, and only one out. Well, this is a, a situation where Jay Bruce can really be patient at the plate. Brant Thompson doesn't have the stuff to get him out. He's just going to give Jay Bruce a chance to get himself out by hitting his own, keeping the ball down, moving it in and out. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in on his hands, and Bruce couldn't pull the trigger. You know what? And that's not the that's not Jay Bruce's pitch. If you chart his long balls and the balls he really strikes well, they're on the outer third of the plate. And the Cardinals have consistently pitched every red so far in this ball game inside to try to take away the power. Pull to the right side, and they're going to throw to the plate, and Bruce cannot get the job done. How many times are the Reds fans going to watch it? With a runner at third and less than two men out, the fourth worst team at getting the runner in from third in the entire league. Well, if he hits it harder, it's probably a double or without a double play ball, but uh, certainly it would have given Albert Pujols a chance to think about going to second base. But Jay Bruce runs well, and they're going to get the sure out as Joey Votto breaks the home. You really needed a ball in the air right there against a sinker ball pitcher. That's an easier thing said than done, but still at all, you've got to figure out a way to get the ball and do the job a little better than the Reds have done it. Now Edwin Encarnacion had a pinch hit double in the game here last night. There's a breaking ball away. That ended a stretch of 12 hitless at bats for Edwin Encarnacion before he went on the disabled list at the end of April. And then was activated before the game last night. Two on, two out. You know, he was swinging the bat so poorly when he went on the disabled this time. We speculated for, you know, several days before he went on the disabled list that something had to be wrong with his hand to wrist. He was hit in spring training, and it really never got better since then. He says it's 100% now. Tell you one thing, what a difference when you look at this Reds lineup with now Encarnacion back, with Vado back, to all of a sudden have a guy like Hernandez batting all the way down in that eight hole and how good he has been outside of about a three week stretch this season. One hopper back to the mound, and the Reds miss a chance to take the lead. They do tie the game at one at the end of one.
Greg. You've been reading been about, reading a, bad about Greg. a bad Greg. Today, Today I, consider I consider myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face, on the of, the face earth. of the earth. As we mentioned today, baseball trying to raise money and raise awareness for organizations leading the fight against ALS. There's a pop fly, a broken bat by Rick Ankeel, and then to get it, Chris Dickerson won away. For 70 years ago, Garrett delivered that impassioned speech that has become a part of American history. And Major League Baseball is proud to devote the 4th of July to Lou Gehrig and the disease which bears his name. All of us certainly have known, do know, or unfortunately will know someone afflicted with that horrible disease ALS. So anything we can do to raise awareness and raise money for the fight against that disease is much needed. I consider myself to be the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Those words. Geico quote of the game. There's a base hit in the center field by Yadier Molina. He's on with one out. You know, speaking of Lou Gehrig, part of our television crew, and certainly a familiar name to sports fans in Cincinnati for the better part of 25, 30 years, John Browdy had an uncle, Ira Katz, years ago, whose family befriended and a long time ago befriended Lou Gehrig and apparently Lou Gehrig had told Ira Katz John Browdy's uncle that he would give him a bat if he hit a home run. Well Ira apparently had six children none of whom were sports fans and so when Ira had a chance to leave this bat this is a Lou Gehrig bat all it says is Gehrig on it. He actually hit a home run in a game with this bat. And John Browdy is now the proud owner of it. How about that? It's a beautiful looking bat. And also a, a photograph with a, an inscription from Lou Gehrig. To my little pal Ira, with kindest regards, cordially Lou Gehrig, October 18th, 1930. A lot of the Reds players had a chance to take a look at this bat before the ball game today. And, well, how could you not be just a amazed by that to think that the iron horse this bat right here that's probably a little bit too big for you probably a little bit too big I'll you grow into it. that for the real baseball fans out there it's a 36 and a half inch bat very thin handle and also kind of a thin barrel as well made by a company called Batrite Burke Batrite Hannah Manufacturing Company Athens Georgia sure it's not Athens Ohio got some good looking grain on it Yes, I'm sure. We ought to give this away to some youngster while we're here. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he's probably good idea. Probably a deserving, deserving kid down here somewhere. Hey, young man. Go ahead and take that. Ah, great. I hope that little one enjoys it. Probably go home playing the very nice act. That's a very kind act of you, Tom, there you to go. be able to do that. You made that kid's day. Enjoy it. Thank John Browdy for uh, bringing that down here today and making that a part of our telecast and to give some of the the younger players in this generation a major league piece of history to take a look at and enjoy. Three to two on Joe Thurston with a runner at first and there's a bleeder in the center field that'll fall in a hit. So back to back one out singles by Molina and Thurston and now it's a pitcher Brad Thompson. Uh, you got to figure Tom that this is a, a bunt situation for Brad Thompson. Not a great hitter 125 batting average but Tony La Russa almost always moves his runners up in favor of a of a regular hitter in the lineup. Remember that Thompson is hitting in the number eight spot. 
And you've got Tyler Green, the shortstop, coming up next. Well, Thompson squares and bunts it foul. Thompson does not have a sacrifice. He only has eight at bats and has one base hit. Well, do you want to go racing, Reds fans? Next week, watch the Reds on Fox Sports Ohio for the Kentucky Speedway Think Big Sweepstakes keyword. And you could win tickets to the Built Ford Tough 225 at Kentucky Speedway. Thompson trying to get that ball down the third baseline to make sure that Edwin Encarnacion fields it. Reds look like they're playing it with a straight up defense. No particular play on here. St. Louis a solo home run by Rasmus in the top of the first a one out single by Taveras who stole the base and scored on a Votto triple in the bottom of the inning. Reds had a runner at third with only one out and could not get him in. Thus a 1-1 game with two on and one out here in the Cardinals second. And it's butted to the pitcher. No one's at third. And you know what? That has happened so many times this year where Edwin Encarnacion simply vacates his spot. His responsibility is to stay at third base unless the ball gets by the pitcher. And I don't think he's done it one time all year the right way. There is just no excuse for that. That is bunted right back to the pitcher. That ought to be at very least an out of third base and possibly a double play if he's playing his position properly. Well, now runners at second and third for Tyler Green, a late addition to the starting lineup, replacing the man who was originally in there, the starter last night, Brendan Ryan. Hitting only 228 with two home runs, seven runs batted in. But he's ahead in the count here, 2 0. And, oh. and there's a strike on the inside corner. Had a sellout crowd here last night of 41,349, a near sellout today, but many scared away by the threat of rain. We're playing in a light rain. Boy, not sure where that pitch missed, but it's called ball three. Well, it looked like Gary Cedarstrom was giving Brad Thompson the low strike, and if you're both pit sinker ball pitchers out there, and Owing sometimes likes to work the bottom of the strike zone, that's a pitch you'd love to establish as a strike early in the ball game. single Thurston followed his hit with a liner to center field and after a bunt they stand at second and third with two away and here's a 3 2 pitch to green and that's strike three call to retire the side two hits two left a 1 1 game after an inning and a half in Cincinnati.
This is Chris Dickerson wishing everybody a happy and safe 4th of July. Y'all have a great 4th of July. Reds fans, have a safe and happy 4th of July, and uh, best of luck to you. Hi, this is Jay Bruce. Have a happy and safe 4th of July. And certainly we echo those sentiments from all of us at Fox Sports Ohio and the Cincinnati Reds. A happy 4th of July to all of you. Be careful out there. Make it a memorable weekend, a pleasant weekend full of great memories. Hey, if you'd like to send text messages to our troops watching today on the American Forces Network, here's your chance. Text yours to 37664. We'll scroll those throughout our telecast today so they can see them and points all over the Puebla globe. And let them know how much you appreciate all that they're doing. Because we sure do very much appreciate everything they do every minute of every hour of every day. A 1-1 game as we begin the bottom of the second inning. The latter third in the Reds batting order. Hairston Hernandez and then Michael Owens. Well, that's not a bad lower third. Hairston Hernandez and Micah Owings. Well, it's made a lot better, obviously, with Micah Owings in there as the as the pitcher, the hitting pitcher, that is. But you made a great point, Tom, when you talk about moving Ramon Hernandez down to the number eight spot. I mean, there was a time there with Joey Votto out and some other injuries that caused Ramon Hernandez to back cleanup. So here's your cleanup hitter for a couple of weeks so far in this season, batting number eight now. That's an improvement in your lineup. With a win here last night by St. Louis and the loss by Milwaukee to the Cubs. St. Louis enters play today as the division leaders, one better than the Brew Crew, and apparently Milwaukee does not like being in second. Because batting in the second inning, Milwaukee has a 6 nothing lead over Rich Harden and the Chicago Cubs. The Reds with a loss here last night. With a win, they'd have been a game out of first. With a loss, they're three back. And they slip behind the Cubs to fourth in the National League Central. But obviously, they can get that game right back. And perhaps at the same time, leapfrog the Cubbies and go back into second place with a win today. Well, if you look at the National League Central schedule going forward, you notice that the Cardinals are on the beginning of a three-city road trip right now. They've got three here with the Reds today and tomorrow to finish up the series. And then they go on to play three at Milwaukee and then four at Wrigley Field in Chicago. So with the teams playing each other ahead of the Reds, it's going to be tough for them to make up ground on the division leader. But certainly you can stay in the pack just by playing good baseball as the Reds hit the road, go to Philadelphia to play four, and then finish up before the All-Star break against the Mets. National League Central Division standings presented as always by Honda. Two and two on Ramon Hernandez. Two on Ramon Hernandez, and now he wants timeout as the rain continues to very lightly fall here in downtown Cincinnati on this 4th of July Saturday afternoon. High fly ball straight away center field, backing up Erasmus, and that is out number two in the inning. invite you to stick around in the top of the third inning if everything technically goes okay and you can understand the challenge that one grounded foul by Michael Owens. We're scheduled to be joined by 
Lieutenant, first Lieutenant Benjamin Fiella. Graduated from Grove City High School outside Columbus in 2003, where he was class president. Was appointed to West Point, graduated in 07. This ball hammered by Micah Owings, and this baby is gone! <laughs> Owings almost hit that ball to West Point. And it gives the Reds a 2-1 to lead. That's his second home run against St. Louis this year. Well, we're glad they saved some fireworks from last night for today because Michael Owens is going to need him. A hanging breaking ball from Brad Thompson. And boy, does he get a swing on it. Lift and separate and see you later. That baby took a ride on that empowered charter jet sign out there in left center field. In the left field, a base hit by Chris Dickerson. Oh, what an added dimension you have with Micah Owings in the lineup, batting in the number nine spot. It's almost like having a designated hitter in that. In fact, there were some people kind of talking to Dusty Baker about possibly using Owings as his DH. As it turned out, Johnny Gomes is the DH every time out there, but boy, he's got to feel comfortable having that extra bat. And a little extra thump in the lineup. Third home run overall this year by Owings. We mentioned his second against the Cardinals. The other, you may remember, tied a game in the bottom of the ninth inning here against closer Ryan Franklin. That was his only blown save this entire season. Tavares is singled in the center field with one out in the first inning, stole second. Only his fourth stolen base in the last 28 games which he has played. Of course, you got to get on to steal, and for a long time there, Tavares had a tough time getting on. But starting to show signs on the last road trip and to begin this homestand of things turning around. Absolutely right. Line Thurston's throw not going to be in time and a bunt single by Willie Tavares. And boy, are things turning around for the speedy red center fielder. Well, very good bunt by Willie Tavares, and he's doing it against a third baseman that is challenged by that slow roller play right there. He comes in quickly, Thurston does, but loses his balance, does get a throw off the first base, but even a good throw would not have been in time to get the speedy Tavares. So with a couple out, it looked like the Reds are going down one, two, three. Owings goes deep, and now you've got your main man at the play with a couple runners on. Main man is right, run scoring triple down the right field line by Joey Votto in the opening inning. For Votto, his 40th run batted in. And bear in mind, this young man missed, entirely missed, 30 games. That doesn't include the number of games, which is probably anywhere from, you know, four to eight of either games where he started and had to leave the game when he had the inner ear infection or games where he didn't start and came into the game. And look at those numbers with two outs and runners in scoring position. We'd like to have that pitch back. the Reds for the Dayton Daily News wrote a very interesting story about Joey Votto and despite the 30 missed games you still can make a more than viable argument about this young man being selected to play in the All-Star game. Yes. And there's strike three call and Votto did not like the call. But the Reds get a run on the home run by Michael Owings and lead two to one. And on this 4th of July, let's pause and reflect on an era when the country's collective mind was on the serious matter of World War II. But baseball provided a much-needed diversion 
This American Moment is brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. In the interest of country morale, President Franklin Roosevelt made the decision to continue the national pastime through the duration of World War II. In the interest of freedom, 95% of all major leaguers registered for active duty, more a norm than an exception to the rule. Eventually and inevitably, like the wars before and after, some of the game's biggest stars got the call to arms. Yogi Berra, Hank Greenberg, Stan Musial, Whitey Ford, Willie Mays, and Jackie Robinson, among others, made headlines for what they did on the battlefield. Some 64 Hall of Famers fought for our country, our freedom, and each was asked to interrupt his personal life to serve in harm's way in some of their most productive baseball years. Since the first pitch was thrown, baseball history and American history have been inseparable. For Americans, baseball has always given them something to turn to. When the whole world was crumbling, baseball continues. Of course, no one believes that any sport is more important than young troops sacrificing their lives overseas, especially not the big leaguers asked to commit the ultimate sacrifice. an infield hit for Skip Schumacher. The Reds lead 2-1 at the end of two. And as promised, it is our pleasure and a real honor, and we appreciate all the folks technically who are making this happen. And, uh, you know, think, if you will, for a moment, trying and all the avenues that have to, you have to go down to try and make something like this happen. But kind enough to join us all the way from Iraq, where he has been since March the 5th, is a young man who is from Grove City High School outside Columbus, Ohio, went to West Point, graduated from there in 07, grew up a big Reds fan, and will be in Iraq for at least a year. And First Lieutenant Benjamin Fiala, ben, I hope I can call you Ben. Is that okay, Ben? No, that's fine. It is a real pleasure to have you in uh, Camp Liberty, Iraq. And uh, happy 4th of July. How you doing over there, and how's everybody else doing with you? Uh, we're doing real well. Uh, just enjoying the 4th of July. Uh, things are going real well, and uh, just happy to celebrate Independence Day. Well, it is great to have you with us. And, uh, you know, we mentioned that you grew up in uh, Grove City, went to Grove City High School. And I understand you grew up a big Reds fan that used to come to Cincinnati every now and again. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I remember my, I think I started liking the Reds back in uh, 1990 when they uh, went to the World Series with Barry Larkin and Chris Sabo. And uh, I've always been a big Reds fan since then. Well, Ben, we have a, a, a surprise for you here today. Uh, when all of this was, was coming together, you know, the one thing we thought that maybe would make your day more than anything else was a chance to, I know you can't see them, but you can hear their voices. Your mom, Carol, your dad, Tom, are with us here in the broadcast booth. They are on television right now with you uh, theoretically standing right next to them. Uh, <laughs> Mom and Dad, welcome. Uh, Thank you. You're to describe right now how you're feeling to actually see him. It it's is just overwhelming. <laughs> overwhelming. Thank you, Fox News, Fox Sports, and the Reds. This is awesome. When's the last time you saw Ben? In March. When he, when he was deployed to when, Iraq? That's right. And how much uh, communication have you had with him since? Uh, just a few times that we spoke with him. Not much. What do you think, Dad? I'm mean, just like well. to catch your breath. Yeah, Ben, the field looks great. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Ben, what do you want to say to your mom and dad? Hey, I just uh, want to let you guys know I love you, and uh, I tell you, 
you really don't appreciate home until you're gone. So uh, yeah. just happy Independence Day. I love you guys. We love you too, Ben, and we're thankful that you're serving your country. God bless you. God bless you, Ben. <laughs> we love you, buddy. <laughs> now, you all have four children. You have two daughters that are here today. You have a son, Jason, that lives uh, out in Denver, Colorado. Your daughters, Darcy and Noel, are here at the ball game today. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, but, but since we have, obviously, been here with us all the way from Iraq, uh, to have a, a child uh, be accepted into Westport, I mean, congratulations to both of you right from the start. Yeah, awesome honor. It really elevates your life, you know, being common folk and and how being appointed, you know, to that institution and, and those men and women that, are, that run the organization, the network after, you know, they're inducted into it. And it's just been very, very supportive, very supportive. And even after they're in service, you know, the, the, the United States Army it has a good program for the parents yes. of supporting. And special thanks again to you, sir. Uh, for well, not me. Sir, so believe me. No, uh, we're just thrilled <laughs> to death. I mean, to be able to stand here, and, you know, it's one thing, and I know I'm speaking for a lot of people out there. I mean, it's one thing that we hear about uh, all the men and women that are serving the United States of America and the families they leave behind, whether it be their own. And, Ben, I know you're not married, uh, and you're not leaving a, a wife and children back here where so many <laughs> others are. But to be able to stand next to you two, and, and Mom, the, the look in your eye, Dad, you oh. look like you're ready to cry right now. I am now, crying, I buddy. <laughs> I mean, uh, you must be so proud, but worried, I would imagine, so much of the time, Mom. Is that right? Yeah, we keep him in our prayers and, and also the men and women he serves with and the military around the world. So we're, we are appreciative of them. Um, freedom isn't free. Nope. And uh, we're thankful for those military people who are volunteering to be in and serve our country. Ben, what's the feeling on this Independence Day of your, of your fellow uh, the soldiers and officers out there in Iraq? Um... We think things are going real well, you know, obviously uh, we're just doing everything we can to, to support the mission over here and uh, we're just really looking forward to, you know, watching things develop and eventually coming home. Now, Ben, we understand your mom told us when you were you, when you were a real little guy and you're playing with kids' toys, even back then, you know, you were pretending to be flying. You were uh, protecting the president of the United States. I don't know if there's anything <laughs> genetic. I know you had a... Uh, uh, some family that also <laughs> served in the military, but I mean, it sounds to me like there's something genetic going on even back then in Grove City, Ohio. Uh, yes, sir. That was, I guess, ever since I uh, was young, I just always kind of felt like that was something I should do. Uh, my grandpa was in World War II, and uh, I always really admired you know, that about him. He was my hero growing up, and uh, I just felt like something you know I should I should do myself. Well, I know we are so proud of you here in the United States. And uh, are you able to watch the game at all today? I know we're on the Armed Forces Network, but are you able to see the actual game today? Uh, if it's on AFN, I'm sure I can watch it uh, when I leave. And uh, I was able to catch the Civil Rights game, though, against the White Sox, so that was nice. So what are your days like every day, Ben? Um, it just depends. Um, our mission's changing, so we, you know, we operate around the clock. It just depends what's going on. Um, generally, uh, my job is more of uh, supporting uh, our battle squads. I'm kind of in charge of the, the logistical end of our battery. So uh, I get up, uh, make sure, you know, I work with our supply sergeants to make sure our battle squads have the, the supplies they need to do their missions. Um, we work with our, you know, our combo guys to make sure they can communicate. Um, so, overall, I just spend most of the day making sure our guys out on the road, uh, you know, have what they need to complete their mission, and I try to get out with them as much as I can. All right, now, Mom and Dad, before before we let him get away, you guys go ahead real quick, and I mean, just have a family conversation. Tell him some gossip, an old girlfriend, she's dating some <laughs> other guy that he didn't like very much, or bring him up to speed on, you know, what's happening with his sisters and his brother. Please carry on. This is your moment for right now. I'll, let his, I'll let his mom do that. All right. Oh, Fair no. enough. Uh, <laughs> hey, Ben, Darcy's doing pretty good in softball, and they're second in their, um, in their division, and so they're going into the playoffs at second, so we're hoping they'll do real well. 
and I, I can't think of about anything about an old girlfriend because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we contacted Mr. Tree and uh, asked Crabtree. We asked him to, to video this. So. <laughs> Ben, you have any questions for them about anything going on back on the home front? Uh, how's the food? <laughs> how's the food? Hey, Grandma Roma's still doing a great job, so we've been eating very well. Yeah, we're having a cookout tonight at church uh, before the fireworks. Great, we'll have a hot dog for me. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much, all your military fellas and Ben, <laughs> especially for giving us this freedom to celebrate our independence here in the United States of America. Awesome. Yeah, tell them thank you. I will. <laughs> well, Ben, best of luck. Godspeed ahead, my friend. You're in all of our thoughts and prayers, not just mom and dad. I mean, you're really in their thoughts and prayers. But uh, all of us here in the United States who are so grateful for everything that, that you and your fellow troops are doing, not only in Iraq, but everywhere all over the world. And uh, we wish you nothing but the very, very best and look forward to the day, mom and dad, no, nobody more so than you guys. When he's right back here in OHIO. Yeah, yes. right here at the All Red right. Stadium is where he'll be. <laughs> oh, hey. I -O. I -O. You got it. Ben, when you get back, you got to come up here and see us in the booth, okay? As soon as you get back. I'd love to. <laughs> ben Fiella, the very, very best. Tom thank you, and uh, Carol, we can't thank you enough for coming <laughs> thank up you, here. Sir. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you for letting us. Uh, you know, have you all with us on TV. For, it's a personal for, uh, moment Fox for you Sports. all, but thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And yeah, enjoy the ball game. Have a great time at church. Uh, thank you, eat a hot dog for your son. <laughs> and, uh, boy, you. that was a, a wonderful moment. We thank everybody, not only the Fiala family. We thank the, uh, the U.S. military. We thank all the, the people in between, all those technically right here, all the way in little old Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, that made that happen on the Armed Forces Network. And for letting Ben have a chance to talk to his mom and dad. Not long enough, but longer than most. So a single, a strikeout, and a walk. And now another strikeout racked up by Micah Owens. And that is a second out here in this third inning with the Reds in front two to one. Well, two strikeouts and two at bats for Chris Duncan. He does not like this last one. The first one he went down swinging, but a little frame job at the very end by Ramon Hernandez convinces Gary Cedarson of a strike and he'll drag it back to the pine. What a pleasure to be able to visit with Ben and his mom, Carol, and his father, Tom. And it certainly brings a dose of reality to the conflict that we have all around the world in the pursuit of freedom. And Tom, uh, uh, just nothing like that, being yeah. able to, to just be here and witness it. You, you're 100% correct. I mean, that's the one thing that certainly hits you right between the eyes. Uh, when you're looking at a dad and a mom, and having a chance to actually put their eyes on their son and to see him thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away. We understand they'd only had a chance to email a couple of times, handful of phone calls since March. And I mean, I don't know from personal experience, but I would imagine when you have a son or a daughter in uniform overseas, in a not so friendly part of the world. When you put your head on that pillow every night and you're saying your prayers, you're also scared to death. I fly ball into right field. Bruce backing up appears to have room, and that's that. Two left, middle of the third. The Reds lead the Cardinals two to one.
brought to you by your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. For a dealer near you, visit buyatoyota.com. By JTM Food, Family Fun, JTM. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Jeep, it's a new day. Have some fun out there, Jeep. Two runs, five hits, four men left on base for the Reds. One run, four hits, no errors, four left for the Cardinals. Reds come to bat last of the third inning against Brad Thompson. Ground ball circling from short is green, and his throw is into the dugout. And Brandon Phillips will be awarded second base. Well, anything can happen because by the time the ball gets to the shortstop right here, it's hit the ground about four times. You see how the wet grass really slows it down, and you know that baby's wet. Tyler Green picks it up, fires it over Albert Pujols, and as that ball goes out of play, the Reds have their leadoff man in scoring position. Is that an error all the way or a single and an error? Straight air. Now Jay Bruce. He looks at the ball. Bruce had runners on the corners with only one out in the first inning and had a ground ball right at Albert Pools who threw out Votto, the runner at third, trying to score. Look out, Billy Hatcher. That still moves pretty well. Unless you wonder something coming right at him. Baseline again. One and two on Jay Bruce. You know, with the way that the Cardinals and Brad Thompson are pitching the left handers in this lineup, a guy with a little bit of a longer swing like Jay Bruce, you know, he's moved off the plate a little bit and may behoove him to move off just a slightly bit more. And kind of take away the advantage that Thompson has in trying to get that little slider down and into him. They pound him inside, trying to get in on his fist. They did it the first time and produced a weak ground ball to the first baseman. Well, you brought it up the other night. That's one thing that uh, Dan Heron and John Garland both did as right handers. Really pounded the left handed hitters in the Reds lineup in on their hands. Driven into deep right center field. Rasmus on the run, and he will run it down. But tagging and advancing on the third is Brandon Phillips. That's what Bruce was hoping for his first time up. But a productive out here, his second go round. Well, you know about that beautiful new Toyota Tundra out in left center. If a Reds player hits the Tundra sign or the one over in right center, Frank Caldwell of Cincinnati will win that Tundra. Register for your chance to win during an upcoming game at your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Well, here we are again with a runner at third and less than two men out. Reds 0 for 1 in such situations so far today. A chance now for Encarnacion, and he's down a strike. Edwin ended the first inning, stranding two with a one hopper back to Thompson. Two now on Edwin and when Encarnacio. Wow. 
Strike three. And then a the throw down to third. And the Reds are going to score the run. Boy, you got to wonder about that decision from perhaps the best defensive catcher in the league, Yadier Molina. Well, you know Yadi Molina loves a throw to bases. He usually leads all catchers with pickoffs. That ball kind of squirts away. He tags in Carnacion, and he really doesn't have much of a chance. I mean, Brandon Phillips was only about a step away from third, but he had his back to home plate, and maybe Molina thought that with turning away from it right there, that Brandon Phillips would maybe hot dog it back to the bag, knock it back there in time. He could have a little sneak attack. Well, he throws it over the head of the third baseman, and the Reds pick up an easy run, and it's three to one. And a net ball blistered down the left field line off the bat of Jerry Harrison Jr., and he'll have a two out double. But you know, Chris, you hate to harp on uh, some of the negative because there's so many positives about this Reds team and their ability to bounce back and a good start after the devastating loss last night. But this trend of a runner at third in less than two men out for a team that is not a high octane offensive ball club, missing these opportunities is not good. Well, it's a function, Tom, of having an offensively challenged team. I mean, a lot of people make a big deal about those hitters that are able to hit with runners in scoring position when basic statistics have borne out the fact that aside from a couple of hitters in each league each year, and usually they're the best ones, guys don't choose when they get base hits. And if you get a lot of hits, if you get 200 hits throughout the year, chances are you've got a lot better batting average of runners in scoring position than a guy that only gets 100 hits a year. And I think that's what happens here with this Reds team. You'd love to be able to convert at least 50% of them, and they're they're just about there right now. Runner at second with two away in the inning, and it's 0-1 on Ramon Hernandez. And that's in the air to right field. That ball's hit hard. And backing up on it and reaching up to make a tough play is Ann Keel. But well, the Reds take advantage of an error by the shortstop, an error by the catcher. And lead three to one at the end of three. Today we continue to pay tribute in our patriotic theme as Reds players recite President John F. Kennedy's inaugural address from January the 20th, 1961. This American moment brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship support any friend, oppose any foe, in order to assure the survival and the success of liberty. This much we pledge in war. And I mean, how could you not pick the New York Yankees? You would have to. Or the Dodgers. But you got to go with the Yankees, right? Well, in between innings, Tony La Russa had an extended conversation with home plate umpire Gary Cedarstrom. Don't know what that may have been all about. We do know the Cardinals are coming to bat against Michael Owings here in the top of the fourth inning, trailing the Reds by two.
first pitch swinging a liner right at Dickerson one away. The Reds fans you chose Edinson Volquez as this season's fan choice bobblehead on Saturday July the 18th. Come out to Great American Ballpark and receive your very own the first 30,000 fans in attendance. Receive an Edinson Volquez bobblehead courtesy of Kroger. That'll be the third in that collectible set of four. After we gave away the Jay Bruce bobblehead last night. For tickets call 381 Reds or go to Reds.com. That hair is not going to be easy. Putting together that Edinson Volquez bobblehead. That's got to be tough. Yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to do that. Have you been over to a bobblehead factory? No. You? No, I have not. It would be a good collectible, though. I've been around a lot of bobbleheads. You've probably been a bobblehead. Probably right. Maybe again. Pulled down to Votto. He will feed the covering Owens, and there are two gone in the Cardinals' fourth inning. Now the Cardinals have struck the ball well two times in this inning. Nothing to show for it right now. Micah Owings looking to get through his first one, two, three inning. Oh, I still can't get over the visit we had with Ben and his mom and dad, Tom and Carol, just the Fialas. What a wonderful half inning. Wish we could do that with a serviceman every inning mm -hmm. in this ball game today. And he's down quickly 0 and 2. You know, there's a lesson to be learned in so many things in life. But Brian Hunterman, who orchestrated this entire thing, talked about having a meeting. I was the very first one to say, why in the world would we have a meeting so early before a day game after a night game? But then after you have those people come up here and you see their faces. And having a chance to visit with their son in Iraq, they realize that meeting should have been at 4 a.m. and been working. And that is thanks in large part to our friends at Marathon. Major League Baseball, along with the McCormick Foundation, have partnered to support Welcome Back Veterans, an awareness and fundraising initiative to address the mental health and job needs of returning American veterans. 
The goal of Welcome Back Veterans is to raise $100 million for research relating to post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury and to provide job opportunities for veterans. We'll talk more about this later on today. Those are great looking hats. The both teams are wearing with a red, white, and blue over every team's logo. They happen to look especially nice on these two teams because of their primary color being red. Mike Owings homered his first time up. A one hopper back to Thompson this time. Reds lead three to one as they bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. Mr. Welsh, a happy Fourth of July to you and your family. I know you'll be out on the grill with that very handsome shirt and tie later on tonight. Well, you know what? You have to dress for the occasion, Tom, and I'm glad we're here in coats and ties this afternoon because as soon as this game's over, this baby's coming off. I'm back to putting my Reds golf shirt on with a nice C insignia and going to wear the colors proudly. Very nice. Of course, in the meantime, like so many families around the Tri-State area, there's a lot of amateur baseball being played, and they're hoping that the rain holds off, and that they can get their one game or their two games, or even in some cases three games in in one day. That is, oh wow, I look uh, very, very close to being fair over the bag, but right there on top of it, Jim Wolf says foul ball. to tell from here but you know I can't imagine being right on the line like that but that's about as tough a play as you can call from a from a first base umpire it's where it crosses the bag not necessarily where it lands well they continue to pound these left handers inside especially Chris Dickerson you know as I, as I size up different hitters Tom from a pitching perspective teams have been successful trying to get inside on Dickerson he's the guy that kind of crowds a play a little bit for left hander Almost challenging him to come on inside. And when you get him looking in there, they try to feather that little two seam fastball to run away from him. Ran to the count on Dickerson, one for two in a game, and he takes a walk. Well, he is playing so well right now. I mean, you know, how long it lasts, no one has a crystal ball. But there is no question that young man was indeed. Accurately described by Dusty Baker as just trying to do too much to prove to everybody that he was a major league everyday player the first three weeks of this season. He is really playing good baseball. Tavares two for two in a game a single to center a stolen base a run scored then a bunt single up the third baseline in the second. throughout really the entire afternoon and into the early evening and playing in a light drizzle right now. But granted it's only a three to one lead. You'd love to tack on a five spot here in this inning. But the pace of this one from a Reds perspective you'd like to see pick up just a little bit. You mean to get the official Absolutely. five innings in? Yeah. I mean you've worked your tail off here to get this three one lead. And come back after what happened here last night. Of course, the Cardinals are not interested in that at all. Out and Dickerson not going a ball and a strike. So you 
ask yourself right here if you're Dusty Baker, you want a little bit of offense. Willie really, Tavares is not a hitter that drives the ball all that well, but he does make contact. Count on a 1 1 count after a pitch out. What are the odds of the Cardinals pitching out two, two pitches in a row? Might this be a good time to put on a hit and run? Will be a double play. Well, that's just tough luck. And that will end the inning. So we played four at Great American Ballpark on this 4th of July, and the Reds lead the Cardinals 3 to 1. Scoring so far today, AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Cardinals come to bat in the fifth inning against Micah Owings. With the Reds in front, 3-1. to 9-1-2 one. and two in the batting order. Tyler Green, Skip Schumacher, and then Colby Rasmus. Oh and 2 Mike Owings throwing a lot of strikes here today. 42 of them against 20 balls. His walk one batter, fan five. Allowed the one run on four base hits. Really the one run on one hit, the home run by Rasmus in the opening inning. You know, he's gotten better and better, Tom, as the season has gone on. Yes, he had somewhat of a hiccup a couple of starts ago in Toronto, but still in all, I mean, it seems like as his confidence grows, he just becomes more aggressive with the baseball. It's the kind of pitch you throw as a pitcher, and you say, That's exactly where I wanted to throw it. But it was a ball. The next one was not. Six strikeouts for Michael Owens. And we answer our athletic trivia question about the three teams to have won 100 games on the 4th of July. We guessed the Reds, Cardinals, and Yankees. Ah, not the Cardinals. The Cubbies, number one. And the Pirates. Philadelphia is a team I definitely would not have guessed. You? Now that would include, obviously, the Philadelphia Athletics. It's kind of, you know, it can be confusing when you're going all the way back into the 1800s 
because teams have changed names and then a different team will come in and, and take the place of the team in the city. For instance, Philadelphia Athletics went on, then they ended up having a Philadelphia Phillies there. So what Phillies team are you, what Philadelphia team are you talking about? Nice play by Harrison. Got a good jump on that soft liner by Schumacher. Two away. I am not disputing the results of the, of the, the, the overall tally. Don't get me wrong. But it's a hard thing to do. I'm sure Lauren White was up all night researching it and figuring out exactly who was on that leaderboard. Lone run with one out in the first inning. That's a great pitch right there by Michael Owings. You know, you you want to pitch inside, you want to get a guy off the plate, but you don't want to wake him up. You know, certainly don't want to throw at his head or his neck. But you come in there around knee high to a hitter like Rasmus, and you get him off the plate a little bit, you move his feet, you get him unsettled. I remember having a pitching coach in the minor leagues, Hoyt Wilhelm, who was, of course, a Hall of Famer known for his knuckleball, but he would say, listen, on an 0-2 pitch, there's no better thing to do if you're not going right after the hitter to get him out on the next pitch, you throw at his feet, especially the fast guys. This one lifted into deep right field. Bruce back to the warning track, and that'll end the inning. So Pools left in the on-deck circle. Mike Owings, five innings, four hits, one run as a two-run lead. Park, the place to be before Reds home games. Enjoy food, drinks, games, live music. Test your skills on a variety of interactive games, including the Chiquita High Heat Carpet Land Run It Out Track. The Recreations Outlet Play Area. The kids love that. Believe me. For tickets, call 381 Reds or go to Reds.com. Reds bat in the bottom half of the fifth inning with a 3 to 1 lead. And that ball hammered to right okay. center field by Joey Votto. Goodbye. Boy, you talk about a pair of first basemen putting on a show in this series. Pools and Votto are doing it. Triple the first time up and a home run in this at bat. He wastes not a bit deep in this at bat as he jumps on the first pitch that he sees. And there was no doubt about that. Man, oh man, talk about carrying a ball club. Ten home runs now for Votto. 41 runs batted in. And all that despite the fact that he's missed 30 games this season. 
So the Reds now lead four to one, and it's a pleasure to be joined. You know, earlier we visited with the young man from all the way over in Iraq, and certainly a man here in the United States who does so much to thank those who are serving in the military is John Gwynn, a veteran of the U.S. Army and founder and president of the Thank You Foundation. What is the Thank You Foundation, John? Well, the, the mission of the foundation is to show appreciation and express gratitude for our military, our veterans, and their families. We do a number of different programs. We brought some folks here today. We have a Marine that just got back, getting ready to leave again to go to Afghanistan. Uh, brought him here today. Uh, we have an Air Force uh, security uh, police officer who's here today. Um, we do our mobile health unit with the VA that's out uh, providing health care for veterans. Just a number of programs. Now, you live in Lebanon, Ohio. Correct. I live in Lebanon from Dayton, originally. Where in Dayton? Well, a little north, Vandalia. Okay, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and certainly, you know, we, we've talked so much today, and we talk all the time, as there's a base hit about ways that all of us, besides just saying the words of gratitude and appreciation for the veterans and what they're doing, well, what are some of the ways that your organization can be helped by so many that are watching the game right now? Well, there's a number of things. You know, we're always needing volunteers. Time is just as important as money sometimes. Uh, we're always trying to send care packages to our troops. Right now, there's over 400 uh, local troops that are going to be deployed. Well, they've deployed in the last 60 days. They're going to need support, their families. You know, financial contributions are always a big plus. But time and just, uh, you know, the ability to help out always is good. Now, when you talk about the families back here, I mean, you know, you talk about so many different things. Give an example, if you don't mind, of a couple of them. Like if, if a, a young man has been deployed, he's got a wife, he's got children here in the, in the area or anywhere. Uh, take it from there. Well, you know, a lot of times these families, they don't know where to go for even the simplest of things. If they have a leaky faucet, you know, something like that, uh, they're not sure who to call, who to, you know, who they can trust. And so they might contact us to help us, uh, you know, help them find home repairs. And John, this is a local organization uh, that's based here in the tri-state area. Uh, I think up in Lebanon is where it's based out now. Is that correct? Well, we actually have an office in Westchester now. Okay. Uh, but yes, we are based out of Cincinnati. But we service, you know, primarily Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana. But we do also support for pretty much all of over, soldiers all over the country. Now, what made you, after serving in the U.S. Army? What made you say, you know what, this is something I think there's a void there and we need to find a way to fill that void? Well, I served in, you know, from 87 to 90 in the Army. My father served in 61 to 65, and my grandfather was in World War II, but the inspiration is my mom. Uh, she had a real heart for our Vietnam veterans. Uh, you know, obviously they were not treated the way, the way they should be uh, when they came back. And when she died of cancer in 2002, we wanted to do something kind of in her honor. That is wonderful. Base hit by Jay Bruce. After a single by Phillips and the Reds. Already a run home in this bottom of the fifth inning. are looking for more with runners on the corners and nobody out. So for anybody out there watching right now, do you have a phone number or a website? Always uh, go to the website, uh, thethankyoufoundation.org. Just make sure you put the in front of thank you. The Thank You Foundation, T-H-E-T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U, Foundation, F-O-U-N-D-A-T-I-O-N dot Org. Yes, sir. When you're right about time, I mean, obviously everybody needs money in whatever organization it is you're with, but, but so many times, uh, you know, you, you might be that guy that can fix a le leaky faucet, right? Uh, not me personally. No, but, no, uh, but yeah. I mean somebody who might want to help out. Sure, yeah, if you if you are out there and you're, you know, uh, leaky faucets, uh, basic home repair, those types of things are always needed. And, John, even small financial contributions, uh, like $100 a year, $10 a month, or even reloading your Kroger gift card. Tell us about that program. The Kroger Neighborhood Rewards Program is the best way to help us raise funds. We give you a Kroger gift card. You take it, load it up, do your shopping at Kroger, gas, groceries, or pharmaceutical needs, and uh, they donate 4% back to the organization. Wow. It's not a surprise from our friends at Kroger. Not a surprise at all. They are awesome. They are the best. And JTM is another group that it just is always very supportive. Oh, yeah. No surprise there either. None at all. Talking about local companies. We are very fortunate here in Cincinnati. Uh, the Cincinnati community is great for supporting its veterans and its troops. Having dealt with so many different uh, other cities, it's not like that everywhere. Cincinnati is truly, uh, as Ronald Reagan used to say, the light on the hill. 
the Reds are so very supportive too. In in, in a rough estimate, how many veterans come back and and are you able to help uh, them and their families in say a, a, a calendar year? Oh wow. <laughs> I'd have to say it's literally thousands from everything of, of simple uh, show, you know, showing grat uh, grat uh, gratitude from doing our certificate program all the way up to financial support. You know, during the holidays, we run a, uh, a holiday support group program where we uh, offer up to $500 worth of gifts and food uh, to local military families who are in need or wounded. And uh, last year, we did $10,000 worth of support just in that effort alone. Well, I tell you what, John, we can't thank you enough. And I know I'm speaking for so many who uh, who have had families left behind or those that come back after serving in our military and the great work you're doing at the Thank You Foundation. And again, the website, T-H-E, the Thank You Foundation.org is a website that you can log on. Here comes a squeeze, and it's a foul ball. And a good thing for the rest. But the Thank You Foundation.org is a website you can log on and find out how you can help so many that serve our country, that are currently serving, that have served, and their families. Keep up the great work, my friend. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank thank John, you. thanks for joining us. Good to see you again. Thank John you. John Gwynn, a veteran of the United States Army, still wears his Army pin with great pride, and the founder and president of the Thank You Foundation. You know, on his business card, Tom, right under the... Thank you, Foundation, and this website name, The Mission of Appreciation. That's what they're all about. Well, the rain coming down a little bit harder now. And again, a runner at third in less than two minutes. Now, well, they're going to leg out the fielder's choice to bring in that run. So that makes it a 5-1 to one game. Well, I'm not sure what Joe Thurston was thinking about. I mean, that's no ordinary rabbit running down first base. That's Speedy Gonzalez and Willie Tavares. I mean, he hits a slow roller to the third baseman. Yeah, normally you're going to be able to turn two. But this is Willie Tavares run. Or make it Jerry Harrison, that is. And Jerry Harrison runs extremely well. I mean, I don't think that, uh, that Thurston realized it. That was not a double play that was going to be had, and the Reds are able to push another run in. Well, how about that slide by Jay Bruce there at second base? We'll go back and look at that again. I mean, that's like a an outside linebacker with the size of Jay Bruce making sure the Cardinals were not going to turn this double play. Well, the idea is to go hard into the bag, not dirty, but you go in hard, you make sure the guy who's turned the double play knows that you're coming. Skip Schumacher gets out of the way. That's not a bad turn by Schumacher, a converted outfielder. But Jay Bruce makes his presence known. Now Hernandez. Uh, two run inning here in the bottom of the fifth. The Reds have scored in four of the front five against starter Brad Thompson and now have a four run lead. Easy for the shortstop green, but Joey Votto leads off the bottom of the fifth inning with a laser to the seats in right center, and the Reds lead five to one.
Barbecue Sweepstakes presented by the Ohio Department of Public Safety. We'd like to congratulate Vicki R. of Cincinnati. She won a 40-inch LCD HD TV, a brand new grill, and patio furniture with accessories. So thanks to all of you who participated, and remember to buckle up. That's the way she wanted her name, Vicki R. Let's check in with Jim Day. Hey, Tom, thank you very much. Uh, we are not only honoring the men and women that are serving overseas, but we've got some service men and women in the crowd, and one of them is Marine Lance Corporal Corey Ross, uh, Moss, excuse me. Uh, he's originally from Fairfield, Corey. He uh, graduated from New Richmond, a seven-month tour of Afghanistan that he recently returned from. How are you feeling on this Independence Day? Uh, good to be home, be with my family and everybody else. What are your normal duties in Afghanistan? You just told me now. This is, uh, I tell you what, you, you are right in the real McCoy. Uh, yeah, I'm a mortarman. Uh, my duties are kind of defense of the base that we're set at. And uh, we go out on patrols every now and then, but mostly just staying at the base. What is it like over there? Um, and I've said this before. Uh, any slice of Americana that you guys can get is precious. Is it like that? Yeah, it is. Uh, people send us care packages just with, like, Skyline Chili. I got a lot of Skyline Chili from uh, our county commissioner, Bob Proud, and that was the most amazing thing that we've really? ever gotten. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you share that with some other people that aren't from the Cincinnati area? Everybody. Everybody loved it. Everyone loved Skyline. Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can't realize, you know, Skyline's on every corner in this town, and you don't realize uh, how much you miss America until you're serving uh, like you did, correct? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, letters, phone calls, everything. Just it's the most amazing thing you could ever do over there. Now, have you been a Reds fan? Uh, yeah, for a while. So you're enjoying this uh, this lead right now? Yeah. <laughs> Smashing the Cardinals right now. I'm not upset. Uh, there's a base hit right there by uh, Superman. You do get to see Superman play today. <laughs> Tell me about um, the men and women that are over there. Uh, especially the ones there that might be watching on the American Forces Network right now. Uh, any message to them on this Independence Day? Uh, I'd say good luck. You'll be home soon. Uh, it doesn't take too long. And once you're home, it's the most amazing feeling ever. And just keep up the good work. Well, once again, it's uh, my pleasure to shake your hand. Again, uh, everything that you do for our country and everyone over there is greatly appreciated and uh, much respect from here. Thank you, sir. All right, Tom Brenneman, this is one of your heroes right here. He's a mortarman in Afghanistan. And uh, tell you what, Lance Corporal Corey Moss in our thoughts and prayers as we move forward here. Amen to that. Thank you very much, Jimbo, and thank you, Mr. Moss. A leadoff single by Albert Pools to start this sixth inning. You know, when you're talking about uh, some of the organizations that... Uh, help veterans and the families behind while they are serving. Well, I mean, you hear that fellow right there talking about, you know, getting a, a can of Skyline Chili in uh, maybe your local church or you know, community organization. You put together those care packages, and maybe when you come down there, you're thinking, geez, I don't know. I should, wouldn't they want something else besides this? How about his reaction to just getting some good old Skyline Chili from Cincinnati, Ohio? The simple pleasures. Amen. 3-0 on Chris Duncan and a four-pitch walk, putting two on to start the Cardinals' sixth inning. The mention is starting to rain harder now. You know, Tom, what we have heard through, you know, talking to veterans either on the air or off the air, so many of them downplay what they do over there. And so many of them downplay just the personal hardship that they go through, the, the, the soaring temperatures and the, the searing heat that they have to deal with and the sleeping conditions and the lack of food and just the, the lack of being home and around your family. And uh, you know what? It, it, it's much, much worse than what they portray it as. And, you know, it's just hard for us to realize sitting over here in the comforts of the United States uh, to, to really give them what they that they deserve. And it's just it's days like this that makes you have a real reality check. Mm -hmm. Phillips caught a break, got an out as the ball deflected over to Hairston. He took a hit from Duncan. So they cut down the runner at second, pulls on to third. And Phillips going to help out Jerry Hairston Jr. 
I guess you put it down uh, technically four to six right there, although it was a, almost a double dribble by Brandon Phillips to get that ball. Nice pickup by Jerry Harrison, who stays right in the path of that ball and the bearing down huge and tough guy, Chris Duncan, as he comes in there with a very clean but hard slide to make sure that the double play is not completed. Boy, is that guy a versatile player. I mean, put him anywhere. But now Yadier Molina, who is single to center and lined out to left fielder Chris Dickerson. One for two in the game. Reds in front five to one in the top of the sixth inning. Mike Owings has pitched very well to this point in the game. And there's ball one up and away. He's thrown 83 pitches so far. And no activity, I don't believe, right yet in the Reds' bullpen. Yadier Molina and a breaking ball is down and away. Poole started the inning with a base hit, went to second on a walk. Then Ann Keel bounces into the fielder's choice with a runner out at second base. So they're on the corners with one away in a 2 0 pitch. High pop up. Short right field. Two holes is not going to test, or one would not assume the arm of Jay Bruce. Runner goes to second. They throw there, and now they throw back to the plate. The Reds could not have misplayed that any worse. That's why you hit the cutoff man. And then the decision by Hernandez to throw to second. He had no chance to get Ann Keel. Well, you see they're lined up perfectly, but you know, if you're Jay Bruce out there and you want to cut the run off, you're thinking about getting it down there to the catcher. They just simply from there, before throwing the ball back to second base, Ramon Hernandez has got to take a look down to third and see where Albert Pujols is. He's about as good a base runner as you'll find in this league. And he steals one from the Reds. You know, because Tom, you know you want to hit the cutoff man in a situation like that, and that may have changed things, but the fact is that if even if it's cut off close to home plate where Joey Votto was. You know, if Votto doesn't check the right or third, the same thing's going to happen. I know, the only thing, though, and I, mean, I would beg to differ, the only thing that the only reason Pujols took off was because the first baseman did not, or the only reason Ann Keel took off is because the ball was overthrown to the cutoff. That's man. true. I mean, you hate to point out the basic fundamentals, I mean, but again, They've had a cutoff man on a throw from right field for 150 years in this game. Mm -hmm. And it's not just because, you know, you can't show off your arm throwing from the outfield. And again, Jay Bruce, a young player. Mistakes are going to be made. We know that with this Reds club. It's a very, very young team. Two, meanwhile, on Joe Thurston with now a runner in scoring position, a run home where they should be on the corners with two outs and nobody in. Right three. Then you got to give Ann Keel a little bit of credit as well there. I mean, there's no sense in him going halfway on a routine fly ball to short right field. That ball is lifted to deep right field. Bruce back to the wall and makes a nice catch up against the wall to win the inning. 
Cardinals get a run back, middle of a six, a five, two game. Now we know Aaron Harang is one of the team's most active when it comes to community involvement. Aaron himself will tell us about his Aaron's Aces program and this American moment brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. It's a program to, you know, bring uh, actively deployed or active military personnel, bring their families out to a game, let them get their mind off of, you know, not being, ha not having one of their parents there and just get, have, give them a fun day to come out to the ballpark. You know, we, we give them a t-shirt, autographed t-shirt that I signed personally. Um, $10 voucher for food in the stands, you know, ticket to the game. And, you know, if I'm not pitching on Sundays, I usually meet up with them out in the bullpen and, you know, do autographs and kind of talk with them, see where their, you know, mother, father's at or aunt, uncle, whatever. We're trying to show our appreciation for what they do and the commitment they put forth to serve our country and, you know, and also the, you know, difficulty of being away, um, you know, and kind of giving their family something else to look forward to and, you know, maybe give them something exciting to talk to them about when they get to talk to them. Can. The runner at third and only one out in Carnacion struck out and then Yadier Molina thought he would catch Brandon Phillips sleeping going back to third and threw it down the left field line allowing Phillips to score. That was back in the third inning. That put the Reds on top at the time three to one. They went up five to one before the Cardinals got a run in this sixth inning. The Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brood for his light. Cardinals have gone to their bullpen. Blake Hawksworth. And they'll bring in a right-hander, Blake, Blake Hawksworth. Hawksworth. Replacing Brad Thompson. Hawksworth made his major league debut back in early June against Colorado. And there's a bunt. Michael Owings, one pitch and one out. Jared Hawpower made his major league debut here last night. Comes on as part of a double switch, replacing the man who made the final out in the top of the inning, Joe Thurston at third base. Five runs, four of which were earned runs, given up by Brad Thompson. Nine hits in his five innings of work. He walked two and struck out four. Robert Pools, a grand slam in the game here last night. The all time grand slam leaders, Lou Gehrig. 23 of them. Manny Ramirez. Three less than that. Look at some of the names on that list. Eddie Murray. There's a ground ball to short. And that is the second out of the inning. Robert Pools has 10 career grand slams. Four of them this season. And by the way, the 10 grand slams for Pools is an all-time St. Louis Cardinals franchise record. He shared that record with the great Hall of Famer Stan the Man Musial before breaking that tie last night. He's got a long way to go before that final number is written. Pools with 10 and 
Goodness gracious, no telling how many that'll turn out to be. That one shot the other way by Tavares. And after losing his footing in right hand, Keel recovers in time to hold Tavares back for his third hit. He had two hits last night, was on base three times. So he's been on five times in the last two ball games, really the last game and a half, considering that we're only in the bottom of the sixth here. What he did in the first inning on the very first pitch was steal on the first pitch. We'll see if he goes again. Impressive names right there. About the numbers this year, however, on Albert Pools with the bases loaded. Six for seven. Four grand slam home runs, and he's driven in 20. That ball hit hard in the left field by Joey Votto, but Duncan will make the catch, and that'll end the inning. We go to the seventh in the rain on this 4th of July, and the Reds lead it 5-2. to two. Cardinals in the first inning second batter of the game Colby Rasmus a home run to right center for a one nothing lead but then Joey Votto with a run scoring triple Mike Owings made it two to one with a home run Votto a home run to lead off the Reds fifth inning they scored twice in that frame and Mike Owings has been mighty good again here today, Chris. This is now five of his last six starts where he has really pitched well. Well, the Reds have really upgraded their number five spot in the rotation. Last year, they got four wins all year long from their number five starter. And Micah Owings comes into this ball game with five wins. And he's out there dealing again. I'll tell you what, he... What a competitor. I and mean, we say this, it seems like ad nauseum every time he takes them out. But this guy just battles and battles and battles. Six strikeouts on the day. Having a good time of it. And he has a couple of easy outs to begin this inning. Setting down Hoff Power and Tyler Green. The best sports show comes your way on Fox Sports Ohio weeknights, presented by 1 800 Safe Auto. And for those of you wondering about you know, the, the number Chris just gave, I mean, consider this, and you're always for looking for ways to improve your team. And you could make a strong argument that. Not even halfway through this season, no area of the team has been improved more than that number five spot. The four wins and 21 losses was the team's record last year. Whenever that number five starter started a game, four wins, 21 defeats, 17 games under 500. He had an earned run average somewhere in the sevens or something ridiculous like that. So just if you can get stability. 
And I think that was the biggest change, Tom, when the Reds came to spring training camp. They looked around and I said, all right, you got a returning all-star in Edison Volquez. You have a maturing Johnny Cueto. Of course, you have a Royal and Harang. Now the battle is for the number five spot. How many years in a row did we go to the Red spring training camp looking for a number three starter and a four and a five? What a difference it is. And now you've got the emergence of Homer Bailey. You know, I kind of kidded last night when I said what a problem to have for Walt Jockey when Edinson Volquez does come back. You got Homer Bailey throwing 97 miles an hour with a splitter and looking good at it. What do you do with all that pitching. Uh, play if the Reds can win this game pitched by Mike Owings today. Now Chris mentioned his record is five and eight. The team's record in games Owings has started is six and eight. So already two more wins than they got from that number five slot all of last year. If they win today, that number goes to seven and eight. There's a base hit into center field by Schumacher, which will allow Rasmus to bat with two out and one on here in the seventh inning. Rasmus is the one guy who's given Micah Owings some problems. He had a home run in the first inning, did strike out a second time up, nearly left the yard back in the fifth. When he hit a long drive to Jay Bruce, and Bruce flagged down right at the right field wall. Well, the Reds have a left-hander in Daniel Ray Herrera, a right-hander, surprisingly enough, in Nick Massett, ready in the bullpen. And it is Dusty Baker bring on Herrera to face Colby Rasmus. I would imagine this is why he has that duo warming up down there. I mean, let's face it, we know who's in the on deck sir. Mm -hmm. And after the Reds really gave away a run defensively in that sixth inning, allowing St. Louis to get within three. You know, they're one more base runner away here in the seventh inning of bring, bringing pools to the plate representing the tying run. And Dusty wants a left hander, however. Question becomes: Does Tony Larusa hit for Colby Rasmus? I would imagine we're going to see Ryan Ludwig here. An excellent outing today by Mike Owings. Six and two-thirds innings of six-hit, two-run baseball for back-to-back -back games in this series. Outstanding starting pitching by the Reds. A skyline call to the bullpen. The Kroger Bleachers ticket prices start at just $7. And for additional savings, plan a group outing of 25 or more. Get your tickets by calling 513-381-REDS or go to reds.com. Well, we speculated that with a left-hander Daniel A. Herrera coming on, to face a left-handed batting Colby Rasmus, that we would see Ryan Ludwig. And that is indeed the case. In from the right side. And a 
Hendricks outside ball one. Well Nick Massett after getting hit on the right arm. Boy that was nasty looking at that bicep tricep area today. Black and blue after taking the line drive. Off the bat of Yadier Molina last night in a matchup that Tony La Russa certainly liked. Was a left hander Herrera against a right handed batting Ludwig. So now Dusty more than likely comes out to get Herrera and will bring in Massett to face Albert Pools. Here well, he comes. Brian Ludwig, you know, if you're going to hit Daniel Ray Herrera with any kind of consistency as a right hander, you've got to be able to hit the ball the other way. That was a beautiful at bat by Ryan Ludwig. Well, here he comes again in a critical juncture of the game. Albert Pujols with two on his team down three in a moment. Side corner, it came back to the middle of the plate, and pool holes did not miss it. A grand slam, which temporarily gave his team a one run lead. Of course, through all of that, the Reds tied the game in the bottom of the eighth inning. But St. Louis would score three times in the ninth, three unearned runs. One of them knocked in on a double by pool holes. So now he comes to the plate today in the seventh inning. Representing the tying run. And tonight, or late this afternoon, he faces hard throwing right hander Nick Massett. Hard to believe after that liner he took by Molina last night that he's pitching the very next day. Well, we saw him throwing in the outfield before the ball game, Tom. We were wondering if he was available. He is available. If he's on his game, he'll throw the ball in the mid 90s. But the strategy that David Weathers wanted against Pujols would be a good one for Massett to adopt stay down and stay away. Pitch breaking ball and snaps on the outside corner of strike to pool. He has never faced Nick Massett before. Oh, and won the count on Albert Pools. Will pull the string on him a little bit there. I mean, that wasn't the four seam gas for Massett. Well, that was a back to back sliders right there and you couldn't paint the outside corner any better with a number seven detail brush. It's a 91 mile an hour slider. Mercy. Oh and two now to Albert Pujols. And a tapper off the end of the bat. How about Nick Massey? Go ahead son. Gets Pujols on the weak ground ball to second. 5-2 Reds lead it. We're in the middle of the seventh inning, and we're going to keep it right here for the singing of God Bless America. And again, Naval Officer Reuben Miner will sing as he did our national anthem.
on this 4th of July holiday. And at this time, please help us honor these brave men and women and welcome Naval Officer Ensign Reuben Miner as he leads us in the singing of God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the ocean, white with foam. God America, my home sweet home. umbrella just to my right. Do you see it? It's got us. Blue and white umbrellas just to my right. I'm, I'm two rows behind it and, and uh, towards the dugout. Got us? Don't got Tomer left field. Tomer, I got him by the foul pole. Okay. Welcome back to Great American Ballpark. Five to two, Cincinnati leads it over St. Louis, and obviously a very special day here on July 4th. And I'm with a very special person here, Airman First Class Jeff Clark of the United States Air Force. And Jeff, uh, welcome back home. Thank you. What was it like over in Cutter? It's very hot. <laughs> That's, guys, the first thing he said here, I said, what was it like over there? It was hot. Now, just to give the people here in Cincinnati, because it gets 90, 95 degrees here, about 90% humidity. What was it like there? About 120, 25, with 100% humidity. So this little bit of rain is nothing to you, huh? Uh, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold? Yes. So you're ready to put some long pants on, huh? Yes. What did you miss most while you were over there? You're, by the way, I should tell everybody he is from Goshen. Uh, went to high school there, Goshen High School. What did you miss most over there uh, from Cincinnati area? Sky on chili. Really? Yes. So when you called home and said to send care package, it was send Skyline chili? No, because there was no way to cook it over oh. there. But I missed that a lot, though. So first thing you did when you got home was? Went to Skyline. Really? Yes. <laughs> Good people at Skyline are, are very appreciative to hear that. Now, where do you have to go next? Uh, we'll be going back down to Shreveport, Louisiana, to back to home station. And... No, nothing from there. And then from there, it's just kind of wait and see as to what happens next. Right. Well, let's sit down and let these people watch the game behind us a little bit. We'll continue talking here. Uh, three years you've been in the Air Force, and uh, what basically are your duties in the Air Force? I'm uh, security forces, uh, military police. So an MP. Yes, sir. What does an MP have to do in Cutter most of the time? Um, just a normal job that we do, home station. Really? Right. Uh, pat patrol like a normal cop does. How did they perceive you over there? How did the, how did the people from Qatar and, and the other countries in that area, uh, how did they treat you? The Qataris liked us. Uh, friendly people. But 
uh, that's really it. I mean, now, did you follow the Reds much over there, the Bengals, or anything like that? I follow them the best I could. Yeah. I watch Sports Center every morning before going to work, so to see how they were doing. So they do have the big tents there with the satellite TV and everything for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so some creature comforts from home, right? Right. Right. All right who'd you come to the game with? Uh, my dad and then, uh, some buddies, uh, Jimmy and James. All big Reds fans, as I can see by his tattoo on his right shoulder there. Yeah, I have one of those also. Oh, you have one too? Yes. Where's yours? It's on my shoulder. Uh, on the shoulder yeah, as well? Right here. Oh, on the back of shoulder blade. So, guys, this is a, a truly a huge Reds fan that, that came back to the United States and even proves it on the shoulder. Well, Jeff, congratulations and uh, good luck, and we appreciate everything you've done for us. Thank you. All right. Guys, there you go. A big, big Reds fan. Happy to be here. And as we heard before, Tom, Mrs. Skyline Chili, of all things. Well, it's been like a regular infomercial, if you will, for uh, the great <laughs> Cincinnati company celebrating its anniversary this year. And uh, we thank that young man for taking the time to join us on the broadcast today. Off power will throw out Brandon Phillips to begin the bottom of the seventh inning where the Reds lead the Cardinals 5-2. to two. How about Nick Massett getting Albert Pools to end that inning? Well, in pressure situations, he threw three of his best pitches. We'll take another look at the ground ball right down the line by Brandon Phillips. Strong arm by Hoff Power. You see him slide right there. This field has had a steady dose of a little bit of a dripping, drizzling rain all day long. You know the conditions have slowed down considerably. For his first pitch swinging, fly ball to left, two away. But, you know, Massett, you know, you look at his stuff, Tom. And remember, you got him for Ken Griffey Jr. last year when the Reds had a difficulty finding a team that fit Ken Griffey Jr. And you got a pretty good arm in return. This guy has been throwing in the mid-90s all year. He's thrown as hard on the stadium radar gun as 98. He may have a closer in the making right here, Nick Masson. I know he came to spring training and wanted to be a, a starter, but boy, he has found his niche in the bullpen. Then Carnacion, a lazy pop up to right, and that will end the inning. One, two, three, go the Reds. Five, two, Reds lead it. We go to the eighth. And here are more memories of the 4th of July holiday from members of the Cincinnati Reds in this American moment. It is brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. It was always fireworks uh, at the Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl fireworks was a, was a huge deal, and uh, that was yeah, that was a big thing. I mean, 80,000 people would show up, and uh, they have uh, that's when I first experienced the circus, the Circus Olay, and they had like a trampoline show, and uh, Smokey Robinson would play before, and uh, they have this just enormous, this is incredible fireworks show, and I think that was the one thing that was uh, you know was a repetitive. The kind of outing for our family on 4th of July. We had sparkler bombs. One thing, it's like you wrap sparklers up and they make, you know, they blow up. It's, it's kids shouldn't do it. It's not safe, so don't do it. But, um, no, it, that's that's one of the things that we used, to, we used to do. And, you know, obviously just the fireworks and stuff like that was always fun. I'd have to say some of my best memories from 4th of July when I was when I was young would be fireworks. Uh, pop fireworks with uh, friends and family, my brother and uh, we would uh, we'd have like bottle rocket wars where we'd throw the bottle rockets at each other. But uh, that's probably that's probably what I would go with from when I was young. It's my my biggest memory is the, the fireworks. by Marathon, fueling the American spirit by your local Ford dealer in the Ford F-150 2009 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. By Aflac, we've got you under our wing. And by your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Honda dealers, visit MyCincinnatiHondaDealer.com for current offers. Well, here we are in the eighth inning. Reds lead St. Louis 5-2 to two and taking over on the mound. Faced only one batter last night and walked him, was charged with a run. 
but having an outstanding year his first year as a red left hander Arthur Rhodes. Yeah, I'm not so sure Arthur Rhodes really was warmed up last night properly when he came into that ball game. They didn't give him but a batter to get ready down there in the bullpen although he had a figure as deeper and deeper into the ball game. Homer Bailey got the chances are that you're going to see Rhodes or Weathers and especially Cordero given the Reds had the lead but he's got plenty of time to warm up today. Let's see if he throws more strikes. Well it's two days in a row now that Rhodes has had two outings in a row that Arthur has had trouble throwing strikes. You go back to the one nothing win for the Reds against Arizona. Arthur came in that game allowed a bunt single. He walked two batters and had to get out of a bases loaded jam. But I mean outside of that. But you're really nitpicking to find anything wrong with the season that Arthur Rhodes has had. He has been dynamite. Rhodes able to knock it down on a broken bat liner by Brendan Ryan, and that'll be an infield hit for him to begin the eighth inning. Brendan Ryan right back off the the glove of Arthur Rhodes. The ball gets on you in a hurry. Milwaukee pounding the Cubs. That game is 11 to 2 now at Wrigley Field, and they are in the top of the ninth inning. Rick Ann Keel is 0 for 3 in the game. Rhodes going to work. Fly ball into left center. Tavares will get there. One away. David Weathers is throwing in the Reds bullpen. Left hander Trevor Miller loosening in the Cardinal bullpen. Now Yadier Molina. And now they have the runner caught. Can they make the play? Yes, sir, they will make the play. That's the second out of the inning. And you can rest assured that Tony LaRusso will have words with Brendan Ryan, if not right now. Before he gets on the bus to go back to the hotel. Well, you're down by three runs in the eighth inning, and that guy out there, Brendan Ryan's run, really doesn't mean a whole lot unless it's backed up by a couple of others. And to run yourself out of an inning like that, that is not Tony LaRusso baseball. Javier Molina with two outs and nobody on. The fastball is outside. Molina, a single to center in the second, a line drive caught by Dickerson in left field in the fourth. They knocked in a run, was given credit for a sack fly RBI on a run that should have never happened. Here's a fly ball to center. And Arthur Rhodes takes care of business. Well done. Go to the bottom of the eighth where the Reds lead St. Louis 5 to 2.
Well, time to take a look at our John Morrell hot dog play of the game. Reds caught a major league break on this bouncing ball. Phillips went to backhanded, ricocheted right to Hairston, who took a hit, but they got the out at second base. That was an inning in which St. Louis wound up scoring one run, but what could have been a rougher inning than that were it not for that play. Our John Morrell hot dog play of the game. Skip Schumacher goes from second base into left field. Brendan Ryan, who hit a moment ago, remains in the game to play second base. And still on the mound, Blake Hawksworth. I mentioned he was brought up, made his major league debut back on June the 6th. But this is a young man who had been starting the entire year on their AAA club. So, with the Cardinals down by three runs, he now begins his third inning of work. Doing a nice job, giving up only one hit in his first two innings. Hairston Hernandez and then a pinch hitter one would assume for Arthur Rhodes. And you know what Tom it seems like every right handed pitcher the Cardinals either acquire or bring up or essentially fit the same mold. I mean this guy's not overpowering but everything he throws through the plate sinks. He starts it at the thighs and it ends up at the shins. Field and Ludwig will make the running play for the first out. Well, Francisco Cordero cranking it up now in the Reds bullpen. Will try and come on and nail down a victory in the top of the ninth inning. Hernandez now, Lance Nix for the time being is out of the Reds dugout with a helmet on, bat in hand, a bat for Arthur Rhodes. And there's a base hit in the center field by Hernandez, his first and four at bats today. Hey, Reds fans, for a great tasting quality meal for your family, pick up a bag of JTM beef or chicken Philly cheesesteaks from your favorite grocer, JTM. Food, family, fun. Well, the Cardinals had Trevor Miller getting loose in their bullpen the last half inning. Lance Nix has been announced as a pinch hitter. And Miller is ready if they need him in the bullpen, but apparently Tony LaRusso is going to stay with, or is he? I think he's going to send Molina out. It looked like he was. Apparently they're going to go ahead and pitch to Lance Nix. Ball one. Played this entire game in a steady rain, most of the time lighter than it is right now. That ball driven into deep left center field. Schumacher at the wall. Can I get it? Hernandez on his way to third. Lance Nix a pinch hit double. And the Redswood runners at second and third and only one out in the eighth inning. Well, he's got some kind of power, does Lance Nix, and goes down and gets a sinking fastball in the outer part of the plate. And nearly a robber of a grab right there by Shoemaker. The second baseman now goes back out to his previous position, left field, previous meaning in years past, and unable to come up with that blast. Pretty good effort. Well, now LaRusso wants a left handed. Trevor Miller to face Chris Dickerson is well aware that the Reds are not going to bat for Dickerson here. Not with the premium on defense looking ahead to the ninth inning. Reds lead 5 2, trying to add to it here in the bottom of the eighth inning. We'll be back.
Reds lead 5 2 with two on here in the eighth inning. And Trevor Miller now on to face Chris Dickerson. <laughs> Cardinals are going to bring their infield in defensively. Miller's had a nice year. Well, he's got 11 years in the major leagues, Tom, and he's always been one of these situational left handers where he always has more games pitched than innings pitched. So he's come in here exactly in this situation many, many times. Sometimes you tell a pitcher and a catcher a lot by how you take a pitch. Chris Dickerson did not look comfortable looking at that breaking ball. Hernandez is a runner at third. And Nick's a pinch hit double leads at second. Breaking ball fouled away. It's 0 2. Ahead to the Cardinal ninth inning. They'll have the pitcher spot and then Hoff Power and Tyler Green. That'll be the latter third in their batting order. 0 2 delivery. And a breaking ball off the outside. Uh, one one and two. Miller just trying to tease Chris Dickerson out there with that sidearm slurve. And boy, he has been tough on left handers this year. Have hit him to a, or a batting average of 345, but how about the 120 batting average against left handers right there? That's what Chris Dickerson is looking at. Hernandez at third, Nicks at second. The infield is drawn in, and now Dickerson out of the box again. As Miller is off the rubber. Well, Dickerson has to believe that we're going to see a breaking ball here. I mean, that's the pitch yeah. that Miller wants to get him out with. Well, he's wasted a breaking ball and then thrown his last pitch fastball. Probably another breaking ball. That's a fastball. See you later. How about that? That's why we're up here. Sneak attack and not an overpowering fastball by any means from Trevor Miller, but when you throw a breaking ball at that same spot, it breaks way down and out of the strike zone. And if you hiccup as a left handed hitter and just for a flash of a second freeze and it's a fastball, you're going to drag the pine on back. Two on, two out. There is a sinking liner caught by Rick Ankeel to win the inning. So the Cardinals will come to bat in the ninth inning against Cordero with the Reds leading 5 to 2. Last summer, Bronson Arroyo, along with a music teacher in Boston, recorded this beautiful rendition of America the Beautiful, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Eden Park. This American moment brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit.
bio, check out MLB.tv. For more details, visit Reds.com, where baseball is always home. Well, here we are, after that extremely disappointing here last night. Where the Reds had a 3-0 lead going to the eighth inning, gave that up, but tied it in the bottom of the eighth and lost when the Cardinals scored three in the ninth. A day later, as has been the case with his team, Chris, already so frequently in this young season, they've gotten off the deck. They had the lead, giving the ball to Francisco Cordero, trying to nail it down. Now, this was an easy game for them to roll over on, Tom, but they came out and they played hard. They got an excellent pitching performance from Micah Owings to give them six and two thirds innings, and now they're going to be able to turn it over their closer with a comfortable three run lead. And the bottom of the Cardinal order to face. Jason LaRue batting for the pitcher will lead things off. And the former Red takes high, ball one. You know, Tom, I didn't get a chance to ask you this last night, but I don't really think we talked enough about how great Homer Bailey pitched last night, how well he looked last night. I mean, he was lights out, throwing 97, 98 miles an hour with that nasty split, had four pitches working for him. I want to ask you a question. And, uh, you know, we've had a busy day, but, you know, say Homer Bailey is a senior in college, and he throws a game like that. Now, keep in mind, he pitched against a major league team last night. And you've got Steven Strasburg also in the draft, and both of them are eligible. Straight away center field, and Tavares is here. One gone in the night. Who's your number one draft pick? <laughs> Steven Strasburg or Homer Bailey? Nah, I'm not smart enough to figure that out. You know more about that than I, Roll. What do you think? Well, you know, I, it really doesn't matter who you pick out of that. I haven't seen Strasburg pick personally, but what it tells you, though, I mean, if Strasburg right now is talking minimally, what, $20 million signing bonus? I know that Scott Boris is going to ask for more than that. What does that make the value of Homer Bailey to the Cincinnati Reds? Quite high. You bet. And of course now Homer is going to be able to, to, to reflect on all the lumps that he has taken through his 19 prior starts. Not every one of them were bad starts, but of the 19 prior starts, lessons to be learned in all of them until unquestionably his best major league start here in the game last night. I mean, not even debatable. Were it not for the bullpen, and one of the rare games where they gave up a lead late, Bailey would have had a goose egg through his seven and a third inning. Mm -hmm. Left side charging is Encarnacion, and the Cardinals are down to their final out. Cordero sets down the front two. Well, you know what, Chris? You talked about him last night, and you talked about it a moment ago. The job that Owings on the backside of that terrible loss last night, the game he gives to you here today. You can't say enough about it. Well, when you ask your number five guy to be a stopper, you're asking for a lot. But in the case of Micah Owings, he has shown himself very capable. Two away here in the ninth inning, and there is ball one to Tyler Green, 0 for 3 today. Cordero only one blown save the entire year. That's gas right there. One and two. Series finale tomorrow coming your way right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Bronson Arroyo against Chris Carpenter. Same starting time and tickets are available. 110, and we understand the weather tomorrow is supposed to be spectacular. Well, these clouds and rain due to blow out of here very early in the morning tomorrow and make for what we understand to be a lovely day. Of course, that's if the weather people are right. See you later.
Cordero, a 1-2-3 ninth inning. And the Reds again are able to get a tough night probably of getting some rest and some sleep thinking about the game last night. But back at it bright and early today. They fall behind. They tie the game. And once they took the lead, they never looked back in route to a 5-2 victory. Well, the win today has enabled them to put themselves in a position to win this three-game series.